ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're putting the RTX 2070, this guy right here, the Gigabyte Windforce, up against the GTX 1080. Wow, this guy right here. This is the uh, Gaming X Plus from MSI. And this one is used, that's why it may look a little bit dirty. Try my best to clean it up the best I could. But these are getting harder and harder to find now. So this will be an interesting showdown. Uh, I think a lot of people out there, maybe they're in the market for a new upgrade. Maybe they're coming from something like a 1060 and they see some used 1080s out there. Maybe you should go for that. Or maybe I should spend a little bit more and head towards the RTX 2070. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. So let's start out with the GPUs then. That's a good place to start. So the RTX 2070 is coming with the 12 nanometer Turing TU106 GPU with 2,304 CUDA cores, whereas the 1080 is coming with the 16 nanometer Pascal GP104 GPU with 2,560 CUDA cores. So what that means is that the RTX 2070 is definitely the newer GPU, uh, 12 nanometer versus 16, but it does have fewer CUDA cores. So there's going to be a bit of a difference there. And when we get to the benchmarking, you'll see that. So let's talk about the clock speeds quickly. So the RTX 2070 went all the way up to 1845 megahertz, whereas the 1080 went up to 1974 megahertz, which is quite typical for a GTX 1080. They tend to go up to around the 2000 megahertz mark. Now, as far as memory goes, they're both coming with eight gigabytes, but the 2070 has GDDR6 memory at 14,000 megahertz compared to the GDDR5X memory in the 1080 at 11,000 megahertz. So most 1080s will come with 10,000 megahertz memory. Uh, that's what the plus stands for. So the standard gaming X 1080, that will be at 10,000 megahertz for the memory. But then if you get this plus model, uh, you get the 11,000 megahertz memory. So that's really the only difference there. TDP wise is 2070 coming in at 185 watts and the GTX 1080 coming in at 180 watts. So not much difference there. So let's go over the coolers then. We'll start with the Gaming X Plus. So the Gaming X cards have been around for quite a while now. They're generally fairly solid. Uh, I've used them in my personal rig previously and they've always been good cards. Uh, they're quite slim, but they're quite fat, if that makes sense. <laughs> they're, they're slim this way, but they're fat that way. Get it? Okay. So yeah, um, but I've, I've always liked using them, and they are good cards. Uh, MSI has been making good graphics cards all the way back, all through the Twin Frozen days and everything else. Um, they've always made pretty good cards. The Wind Force as well, this has been around for a long time. Wind Force goes back, all the way back, uh, way back before the 500 series even. Uh, of course, it made a lot of improvements to it, and that's the same with this guy. As you might have noticed straight away, it's a lot longer than the Gaming X, which is good. Uh, but it isn't as fat, so when we get to temps, it'll be interesting to see which one does better. But overall, both of these cards, I would say, have decent coolers with them. Uh, these are not particularly hot running GPUs anyway, so just any sort of decent cooler like this will be just fine for these graphics cards. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks and see which one of these cards wins.
and we're back. So, the RTX 2071. Okay. But it only won by, on average, 5%. And the 1080 actually won in some of the benchmarks. This is not good enough from NVIDIA. That's the only way I can put it. There should be a bigger performance bump there. Now, some of you guys will say, oh, well, Turing's new, you know, give it time. Pascal's been out for ages. You're right. And I could see there being some improvement there. Uh, definitely going forward with the newer games for sure. But still, we you'd expect more than just 5%. So, yeah, I'm not terribly impressed with the 2070 compared to the 1080 in terms of the benchmarks. But let's move on to the temperatures then. So for this, I ran the Unigen Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset. And as you can see, the 1080 actually wins. Slightly lower temperatures and slightly lower fan speed. I think this is mainly due to the uh, Turing GPU being massive. And it could also be a difference in the coolers there. And then we go over to noise. So once again, this was run in the same benchmark. And I'll let you guys judge for yourself. But uh, I've used both of these GPUs for more than a week each. And I couldn't really tell any difference between them. So maybe the 2070 is slightly louder, but honestly, in the real world, you're not going to notice any difference between them. But as always, I'll let you guys judge for yourself. So we'll show you the 2070 first and then the 1080. Which brings us now to the conclusion. And I'm getting really hot because this is a really hot day today, really stuffy day today. So this one's really hard to sort of compare in terms of the price. This is a really sort of strange showdown in the aspect of that the pricing is all over the place for the 1080, which you can't buy new anymore. Uh, in the used parts market, depending on where you live, the prices can be all over the place. But for the most part, for everywhere I look, the 1080 is cheaper than the 2070 obviously, because the 2070 is brand new. Which then leads to the question of, is it worth it to pay maybe a bit more and go for the 2070 over the 1080? Uh, that is very much going to depend on where you live. I'll put it this way. When we consider the performance difference between them, which is not much, it's about 5% in favor of the 2070, I would say it really depends on you personally. So where you live, the price difference between a new 2070, one of the more entry level ones like this, versus a used 1080. And do you, do you want to take the risk on the used 1080 or would you rather just be safe and buy the brand new 2070? It's really going to be up to you. I mean, either way, you're going to get a great graphics card, but it's really going to depend on your country and what you prioritize more. On a more personal note, I will say... Compared to Pascal, I'm very disappointed in Turing. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. So let's take a step back. When the 1070 and 1080 came out, Pascal, to replace Maxwell, uh, the 1070 matched the GTX 980 Ti. And that was a powerful GPU for sure. So the 1070 matched the the 980 Ti, it also had more memory than the 980 Ti and was cheaper than the 980 Ti at the time. So obviously a lot of people that were considering the 980 Ti just suddenly jumped and went and got the 1070 instead. And that's what kind of bugs me about this generation. I mean, the 2070 inherently isn't a bad graphics card. It's just where Nvidia's positioned it. It matches the 1080 you know, maybe it does that 5% better, but more or less it just matches a 1080 and it's coming in at that higher price point. <sighs> I'm just disappointed by it. And maybe with the ray tracing stuff and DLSS, that will make it more worthwhile going forward. But I think that's going to play more of a factor on the 2080 and 2080 Ti rather than the 2070. So that's just kind of like my personal opinion thrown in there at the end. But I really want to know what you guys think. So in the comment section down below, Let's just keep it about these two gross cards, the 2070 and the 1080. Like if you were in the market right now and you had to pick one of these, so maybe a used 1080 or a brand new 2070, which one would you go for and why? I'd really like to know 
what you guys would pick because I think it's very dependent on where you live as as to which one you would probably go for. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed to Tech Showdown, please do because it really helps me out. It shows your support for the channel. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.